Hey, it's me, Andy, and you're listening to the Neon Carnival Podcast, and I'm joined with my sweet baby cherry blossom, Keith. Hey, that's me, Keith, the uh, the other host. So you're saying, so you're saying, Andy. So I was saying, welcome back to the Neon Carnival. <laughs> like that transition into our intro. Oh, wow. That was a good one. That was pretty good. We fucked it up again, though, by acknowledging our our quality transition. (laughs) Which are getting better every We're getting better at it, guys. We promise. We'll learn by episode 100. We won't even talk over each other anymore. Crazy. It'll be great. Now, to car crash into our first topic, uh, racism. Now... (laughs) <laughs> there's been a lot of there's been a lot of everyone talk. immediately just turned it off <laughs> everyone left <laughs> Look, guys <laughs> hear me out there's a lot of talk about there's there's a game and i'm sure you've heard of it called devotion it's a horror game made by a taiwanese developer named red candle games and if you don't know they made a joke about their communist leader uh well no they president or co- whatever the Taiwanese game company made a joke about China's communist leader. China's oh, communist re- okay. president. You talk about this before I say something stupid. Let me let and, me hear it. Yeah. Uh, you just fill for it now. Let me get the article up. Okay. So essentially, uh, they made a joke about China's president looking like Winnie the Pooh. Yeah. And right now, uh, they're they're both all both of their games that they put on, on Steam are getting review bombed. Uh, they both have well, uh, Devotion's been completely removed off of Steam, and their other game, which was fantastic by the way, Detention, is now getting review bombed and is now at mostly negative. Yeah. So here's what uh, this is a quote from Gamespot. Uh, shout out to Gamespot guys, love you. I read your reviews sometimes. I love you. Uh, talk, co- and they're oh fuck off. They're <laughs> quoting PC Gamer. So shout out to PC Gamer. <laughs> I don't read your reviews because you tell me to turn off ad block and I'm greasy like that. Devotion launched to positive reviews. However, the Taiwanese first person horror game came under fire when a piece of in-game art that seemingly mocked pre- Chinese president... I'm going to sound again, racism. Don't worry, don't worry, go ahead. Xi Jinping was discovered. The art compares the president to Winnie the Pooh, a comparison the Chinese government has frequently objected to. <laughs> the fact that the Chinese fucking government has said, nah, he doesn't look like Winnie the Pooh, guys. Stop, please. He doesn't. It's like, it's like when Putin banned memes because he felt like he was getting bullied. <laughs> it's because he was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> guys, stop bullying. Stop bullying politicians. Don't bully Red- politicians, because they, they're they good people. You, they don't deserve it. <laughs> Red Candle released a statement, which implied the image was simply a placeholder and removed the image from the game. But then Devotion came under fire and heavy review bombing, and the developer followed up with a longer, comprehensive no. apology. And then uh, they said no one was aware of this until we received a private report made by a player on February 21st, and then we decided to remove it. If you, th- and if you, then uh, if you think about it, uh, every politician, you know, they're all good people, clearly. And if they've stolen your money, it's because they've earned it. By being a politician. By being a politician. So when know? they say, when they get mad and tell... So uh, what I'm getting here is that Chinese Prime Minister... Xi uh, Jinping said, hey, these these darn Taiwanese game devs, they're bullying me. And then he sent, you know how uh, Donald Trump gets in a mass text to all of America? He sent yeah. a max, mass text, text to all of China and said, hey, I'm really mad. These guys are bullying me. They're calling me Winnie the Pooh. Guys, I don't look like Winnie the Pooh. He told them to review bomb review this game bomb on Steam. Both. And then they pulled the game and then they went and review bombed their other game. It's mm. upsetting. It does nothing now, to do with the racism. No racism. Except, except Andy. Unless you're talking about our video that was released about China. We talked about the Chinese government looking like we didn't, but we talked about we didn't. China. And Chinese people get mad when you make fun of them. I guarantee people later on in our career, if we even have one by the time people are mad about this, they are going to be upset that we made a video called Andy's Asian Adventure. There's a guy called Asian Andy that makes food videos too. So like... Is he really Asian though? Yeah, he is an Asian guy. He's a fat Asian I, guy. Because I am not... I am not Asian. 
as you well, some uh, people well, might be surprised. I, th about I thought that. he was. <laughs> Here's a, a lot here's of a, people. Here's it was a big cool, here's a big expose on me. I probably said this before, but when I first met Andy, I thought he was Filipino, but he's not. Yeah, a lot of people thought I was Filipino too. Are you are you Hispanic or Latino? I am Hispanic. Ugh. Ugh. Hispanic. <laughs> now a lot a lot of people also thought I sounded black, and I don't know why. Do I like? Do you? Did you think I also sounded like? In my personal defense, and I know some people say this is racist. All of my all of my friends that have been black have had much deeper voices than yours. Like they have a like a, a lower tone than you. Because like, what is so being you're like black? The, you're like the highest. Like... You're the highest pitch black guy I'd ever met. If you're a black guy, personally, but I do know that fucking Sky Williams has a really high pitch voice. So. We're on that's not a really slopes. a good that's not a good grading of of how people talk because honestly outside of your accent which only dictates where you grew up not your actual ethnicity that's the only way you can figure out like We're someone doesn't up. sound like a race you know i could be i could be like just the fucking you know most authentic indian man ever you sound but exactly I grew up, what you but i grew like. up in america you sound exactly Fuck. what you look like. That's a rat, the, right? A fucking a sniffling rat. little big, rat with a Slenderman body. A 6'2 weasel is what you sound like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's about right. Guys, make sure to drum some furry fan art of me as a 6'2 weasel. Please and thank Please. you. I won't draw it, despite me knowing how to. <laughs> I won't do it. He wouldn't waste his time on something of me, a sniveling little weasel man. I just want to mention that we're walking on, like, fucking piping hot coals. Talking about any of this. Ouch, oof, my feet are burning. They yeah. got blisters. Let me close my statement then, and we'll just leave this whole conversation behind us. You can't, people don't sound like a race or an ethnicity. That's not a thing. People Is sound. Is that really what you're ending it off on? People can sound like their nationality, not their fucking ethnicity. What does That's this have my to statement. Literally had nothing to do with. You were saying you were saying people thought you sounded black. Was, I thought you were Filipino we, based on your appearance. We were talking about devotion and detention. They're both great games. Go support them, please. You can't support devotion. It's gone forever. Pirate it. Don't pirate it. Don't <laughs> forget it. Don't do it. Don't pirate do it. it. Pirate it. And then um, donate. Donate. Donate to pirate the, the pirate the game. Then put listed on Steam. Take all the proceeds and then. Buy multiple copies of Detention with it. Yeah. Support the devs. <laughs> Support the devs that way if you want. Yeah. Just and fucking I think donate it, directly to them. Yeah. And don't... When this... When our career blows up, we're celebrities, and someone does a deep dive on Twitter, finds, like, our video from 10 years ago, and says we're racist. They're going to find the, the one post you made saying the N-word. <laughs> I never, I never said the N word. I've never said the N word in my life. You used hard R. Never. When never. I make it solo, just know that my partner. When, used when to Andy be... sings along, when Andy sings along to rap songs, he says the N word. <laughs> <laughs> you son of a bitch. I watched a fucking. I watched a Jubilee video. I think. <laughs> yeah. You know Jubilee? So they're like, a, they're like, they make little controversial videos sometimes. But they did one about um, do all white people think the same? There's mm -hmm. those videos titles are so funny. Like, I I look at them and I just I just, I just laugh. But I clicked on that one. Um, mm -hmm. Watched it with my roommate, and my girlfriend, and we we're like, they came along to the song. It's like, um, have you ever said the N word? Everyone's like, oh, blah blah blah, no. And then the next question was like, have you? Can, are you allowed to say the n-word when singing along to a song? <laughs> and like, someone went over and said. They went, everyone went to like disagree, the disagree side of the room, because there's a line you stand where you stand in that conversation, like yeah, yeah. strongly disagree, disagree, agree, agree, neutral, whatever. Mm. Someone, everyone went to the disagree side, most on the strongly disagree, except for these two like trashy white girls who had already been saying some really questionable shit. Oh, and then boy. one of them, one of them's like, like, yeah, but like when I say it, it's like sometimes I will like if I'm in the car by myself and but it's like it's only ever the soft day I never use the hard R and then the one girl's like Why do you have to say it in the first place? She's like, yeah, I'm just I like singing the song if they didn't want me to say it Don't put it in the song. And oh my god <laughs> That was 
Okay. Yeah. What is anyway. your stance on that? Actually, I'm curious. What do you think? Ah, uh, you know what I say? I say neighbor. I one of my favorite songs ever. Fucking <laughs> say childish neighbor. Gambino, Redbone from Awaken My Love. Fantastic album. Buy it on iTunes. Okay. This is this is this is from the perspective of like an albino monkey. But okay, wait. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wait. 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 Hold on. <laughs> I didn't mean it. Okay, I didn't mean to call it. <laughs> you called me an albino monkey. You wanna? <laughs> you wait, fucking... wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on. Just give us, take us, take a step back. Let's take a step back. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's it. We're canceled. We're done. I. I uh... Can I finish my fucking statement? <laughs> sure. My answer to your it. goddamn question before you just attacked me brutally on the fucking street with a 10 foot rod. Okay, you know, go ahead. Mr. <laughs> Donald Glover himself in mm -hmm. his uh, in his soft versions of Redbone, which says the n-word in the chorus like mm -hmm. a couple of times, right? It's it's a common use in the word. By all means, oh, go for it. It's You know, that's his word. You can use it. When he does it on like Kimmel, when he did it on Kimmel, he used neighbor. And I said, that's great. That's perfect. Okay. So now I use that because because it has the same amount of syllables. So it doesn't even fuck up the song's flow either when you are actually trying to sing along to it. Both words are two syllables. It's perfect. Can you can you give me an example of this? Can you can you I can't do, get copyrighted? Can you give us a passage here today? It's won't, well, it won't be. Let me let me listen. Let me listen to Red Bone, and then we just pull in the chorus so I can sing in pull time. It up, pull it up. Skip ahead. To All right, here it is. All right, go ahead. Stay woke. Neighbors creeping. <laughs> they gon' find ya and catch you sleeping. Ooh, now stay woke. Neighbors creeping. This is perfect. Close your eyes. That's the end of the song. This is why I'm happy I started doing this podcast. <laughs> I made sure to sound as white as possible just to enunciate. This is what most people sound like when they sing along to these songs. It's pretty much how they sound. <laughs> That's pretty much how it sounds. Now, anyway, okay. I could have said a lot Glover. more. Poor, yeah. I could have said a lot more, but I, I started it off with <laughs> calling you, you know, what I said. <laughs> I'll pull it back. No, you don't have to. <laughs> you don't have to do that. It's fine. All right. Yeah. I'm we just going to leave it there. We started the, just before we started recording, Andy, you, you had something to say about us getting, you know, called out, right? But being called out for being racists. Uh, in the future, but yeah, you know what? The, yeah. That might happen. But right now, I want to make my own little call out here. Oh, so okay. Over the last, few, let me get the first, the date of the first one. Since around April of yeah. 2018, yeah, I don't know what the fuck happened, but I've been receiving about approximately. Let me check my. Oh, I delete all my spam mail. I've been getting about maybe three to four like fishing spam um like catfishing emails oh no a week three to four a week ranging from somewhat believable to absolutely fucking goofy so you know i've been taking some of the better ones and i've been putting them in a little folder on my uh on my email and just you know i wanted to read them out eventually once i had a good amount of them so today i just wanted to you know do a little deep dive and talk to you about some of these uh, little spam emails. Maybe, maybe in a future video we might, we might get a hold of one of them. But yeah, you know, we're gonna find out. So Google immediately. The title: Very crucial. All caps. Three exclamation points. Google says this message seems dangerous. Um, <laughs> so from and also this kind of relates because a lot of them now the names on some of them are very Asian. Like this one is. Lite Sang. They say, Dearest, it is with trust that I contact you in this transaction. My name is Mr. Lite Sang, a personal accountant, executive board of directors. He's a whole board of directors. Just this is himself. Mr. Jin, Jin, 
What is his this name is again? <laughs> Z, Z Jinping. I don't yeah. look like Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> with the four, so he's the board. He's the whole board of directors working with the Foreign Trade Bank of Cambodia. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yes. I need your assistance to to secure an inheritance fund that belong, just that belong to a deceased, almost a child, deceased client of mine who bears the same name with you. Oh, fucking crazy. He left us some amount of money with our bank for years now, and no next of kin has come forward all the years for this claim. I am in good faith and trust waiting for your urgent response and maximum cooperation for more details. Um, best regards, Mr. Sang, Board of Directors, Foreign Trade Bank of Cambodia. Then it's just, uh, under it says, Phum Pien. And I'm going to look that up. I don't know what that means. It's a I restaurant. Know, that's a restaurant in Vancouver. <laughs> that's a, me- that's a <laughs> restaurant. I, was, I a, said restaurant. It's a menstruation. But, you know, I've gotten a couple Thank of them. You. I got one from Jin Wen Siang. Say, hello, I have something important to, to discuss with you. I am in Hong Kong. Would rather reach you on a private email or perhaps phone. Please write me with your personal email, Jin. Jin Wei Sang. He he says his first name twice. Wow. Now some of these are pretty crazy. Uh, you know, I got one from a Powerball winner from 2017. This one received was received in April of 2018, like more than a year after this fucking lady won the Powerball. Mm. He's like, I got I got 750 million dollars, 750 million dollars. I want to donate two million dollars to you. Wow. Along with 15 other people. Uh, verify my winnings. Please see my YouTube page below. They then link the interview with the Powerball winner on CNN's YouTube channel. Here's your donation code. And then could you, send the donation code to the email. Could you imagine if one of these spam emails was like actually like legit? Like, well, I want to donate $15 million to you. Yeah. And like they just wanted someone to take the money, so like obviously they got get they got put in spam. But like oh, someone really wanted to send you that money. Oh, of course. I can't but the thing here's here's the best part about this. So it's titled the name of it is Mavis when Zach is the winner who actually won the Powerball, right? Mm. Uh, the whole email they talk about themselves, they link an email with Van Mavis Winsack eighteen at Gmail, right? Go spam them. Like, go go the fuck ahead, people. But the person who actually sent this email, his email address is call Carlos Oliveira at cmc.pr.gov.br. And then he has his fucking signature at the bottom is just a whole fucking paragraph in Spanish. <laughs> like some of these people aren't just trying they're just trying just the minimal oh amount God. of effort here. The minimal amount of effort. Yeah. But you know what? Here's one I responded to. It was totally legit. You're saying this person, it had to be real. Here's one from Mr. Bill Gates himself. Mm-hmm. Info at bill.net is the email address. Uh, received this on again in April. These were the first whole first week was just all the best ones here. I hope this information meets you well, as I know you will be curious to know why how I selected you to receive a sum of 5 million US dollars. Our information below is 100% legitimate. Please see the link below. They then link Bill the Bill Melinda Gates Foundation Wikipedia page. Uh, My god. So anyway, great. That's definitely makes me believe that that is you, the Bill Melinda Gates. You just linked your Wikipedia page. I Bill Gates in all caps. And my wife have decided to donate the sum of five million U.S. dollars to you as part of our charity project to improve ten lucky individuals all around the world from our six hundred sixty-five billion U.S. dollar estate. Oh my God! Um, we mapped out to help people, pray, search all over the internet, blah blah blah. Microsoft email owners list. This is not a Microsoft email. This is fucking Gmail. <laughs> so they fucked that one all right, up all right. So. You see, after take care of needs of our immediate family members, before we die, we decided to donate the remaining of our billions to other individuals around the world in need. The local fire department, Red Cross, Haiti, hospitals in Truro, and some other organizations in Asia and Europe that fight cancer, Alzheimer's, diabetes, and the bulk of funds deposited within our payout bank of this charity donation. It's one whole sentence. 
No commas. You should no have. Periods. We should have like a spinoff of where it was just a live stream of just you reading off your. I'd emails. love to do this. I'd love to do this one day. Anyway, just they a kept. Full... So they just like give us your name, your contact address, your cell phone number, and we will give you five million U.S. fucking dollars. Why didn't you take it, dude? Google says this message seems dangerous. Similar message messages were used to steal people's personal information. Avoid clicking links, downloading attachments, or replying with personal information. Google's looking out for me. Google's like, nah, dude, this ain't the real Bill Gates. But I mean, like, this guy said 100% legitimate. He linked his fucking Wikipedia article. <laughs> I oh got God. I got this email from Bill Gates uh, twice. Uh, two, four days apart. Same email. So Bill Gates really wanted me to do this. Really wanted this. You should have done um, it. Yeah. You now, should have done it. What? We wouldn't now, even be here. <laughs> We could have just bought, just bought YouTube, you know? We could have just fucking bought, bought people to do the podcast for us. Yeah. We wouldn't have to be here. We wouldn't have to be doing this goddamn podcast. <laughs> you fucking buffoon. <laughs> I fucked it up. You know, this one, I could still, I could still claim this one. This one was sent a couple months ago. It's from FedEx Courier Service. Uh, email gmartinez at ismm.edu. Mm-hmm. Not see you. You have a package with FedEx. Attention beneficiary. You have a pad- package from FedEx containing an iPhone 8, an Apple MacBook Pro, and a check worth $60 million <laughs> delivered to your house address. You're fucking rich. You don't even know it. You are get back to us as soon as possible for more information and how to claim yours faith- faithfully. Mrs. Rose Michael. Not FedEx. Just some random bitch, Rose Michael. She out here being like, I got your FedEx package. Perfect. I got a couple of these FedEx ones, which kind of fucked me up because I actually was waiting for a package from FedEx at the same time. All right. But, uh, Read a couple more and then we'll move on to our car, hard, hard crash to our next topic. All right. Well, I have I have one that was uh, pretty, pretty good. Ugh, fuck. I have to find it. Uh... So pretty much, I'll just give the gist. There's, there's so many fucking emails. Maybe we'll read them out if you want to. Um, if you want us to, folks in the comments. Comments I section. got an email where a guy said, you know, I need your immediate response to this email. Blah, 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 right? Um, just some random Gmail address. Uh, Musa Ali is the guy's name. But the the actual email is saying it's coming from a Mrs. Doris Yui. Uh, so fucking all over the place, right? Um... They basically said, hey, we, you got an inheritance. Two guys came to the bank today to try and claim your inheritance fund. I said, nah, dude, not today. It's going to this, this guy, right to you, dear client. Um, so can you respond within seven days to you know claim your inheritance fund, but they're going to give you an ATM Visa card with the inheritance on it? That's not really how credit cards work, but okay. I'll bear with you. Respond in seven days or, you know, it's going to be void. Seven days later, I get a response saying, thank you for your cooperation. I didn't respond to this. I just got a a thank you. Um, Thank you for, you know, your cooperation. Could you please send us this information? Um, It was like a response. Like he thought I had responded to him, then sent me the automated response back. It's like, can you please let us, you know, so we can send this ATM visa card. Thank you again for this continued cooperation. I'm like, what the fuck, chief? They doxed you, you didn't even know. They they literally hacked my email, made me respond to them, and then sent me another one. It's just crazy, dude. They got your bank info, but you're like, oh, this guy, this guy's just like just some random YouTuber. Crazy enough. Now I know these uh, these scammers. You know they seem pretty out there, right? They you never you'll never see them in real life. Actually, not true. I almost got. Yeah, I told you about this, right, Andy? Probably. Where there was a fucking... I was looking for a house, right? Looking for a house to rent for some folks. Uh, yeah. And I went to go to this one, and I talked to this guy. I'll have to look on Facebook. I think I can probably share the, the screenshot. So I'm like a link to uh, Imgur or something in the description. Yeah. Um, this dude's like, yo, we're renting out this house for super cheap. The house probably worth like... 
three quarters of a million dollars. It's really nice. Really good real estate location, all that. Well, We're yeah. renting it out for below the average in the town that I live in, right? So it's like, um, it's for 1300 a month, which is fucking silly for a four bedroom house. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay, maybe there's some problems with it with whatever utilities cost a lot. So they factored that in. Um, so I go to ask them, hey, when can I do a viewing? Call them on the phone. They have a fucking American phone number. First red flag. Jesus. Okay. So I give him a call. I'm like, when can I take a look at the house? He's like, oh, well, I'm not here. I'm in America. Uh, can we mail you this key? And that we'll just need you to send the money first. I'm like, the fuck. Well, okay. Uh, in my defense. Well, I know people who do that. My aunt rents a cottage. The landlord, which she met prior to be clear. She met them in person and got the information, but they she sends the rent and that person mails like mails them the key for the thing when they go to rent it right so that makes mm. sense but the, the, you meet them first so the guy's like blah, blah, blah i'm like nah so i'm already super doubtful i go to the house because it has the address the house right. exists i go to it knock on the door there's some guy with his kids living there and i'm like hey uh are you moving out because someone's trying to rent your house out. And he's like, no, thanks for letting me know. I'm like, thanks, man. And then so all, I'm like, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, there's someone in the house. And they immediately panic. And I'm like, can I see your um, like your deed like saying that you own this property? And then they send it to me. What the fuck just happened? The fucking thing is just, it's like, you know, graphic design is my passion. Subreddit. Yeah. It looks like something off of there. It's like signed mr mayor it's got fucking colored over text and text written over it jesus it's, it's gotten the whole fucking works but kids watch out for spam watch out for phishing don't give your information out to people in the street don't give your money away at if all. you're gonna give your money away give it to us on patreon.com slash the neon carnival oh, you sly bastard you <laughs> anyway but also yeah do it please Please, we need it. Anyway, uh, now train wreck into the next topic, Andy, because you wanted to close no, this one off. No, it's actually pretty relevant because, you know, we have no money. We're asking for money. And you know what? You know what that ties into? It ties into good what? old YouTube. Yeah. Now, I know that there's been another adpocalypse. And I'm Has sure there actually? I, yes. There's everyone. I, have you? Have you not heard about this? No, no. You can just okay. give me the whole... Allow me to tell you what is going on. Now, this is a recent development. And this is... We're talking about YouTube hardships. But uh, there's another... Like, this this Adpocalypse came about a lot... Like, pretty recently. And this is from a small channel's perspective. There's already a lot of fucking, like, ch- shit on YouTube. There's a lot of channels. There's a lot of competition... It was basically almost like there's there's a chance, but not much of a chance for us to grow Mm -hmm. on this platform. It requires a lot of work outside of the platform to direct traffic towards you on YouTube as a platform before you can actually start getting Mm -hmm. anything from YouTube. So So this is we're we're still here doing this as a passion. This is a passion project for both of us. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we we enjoyed that's why we're still here. We enjoy doing this now. (laughs) <laughs> Before I continue with how we feel about YouTube in general, let me tell you about uh, what's brought about this fucking second coming of Adpocalypse. Now, uh, there is a guy named Matt Watson. No, not super mega Matt Watson. He's already upset about that, by the way. <laughs> As you yeah. know, if you follow him on Twitter, you'll know. He literally named, he changed his name to Not That Matt Watson on Twitter. Um, but uh, he has discovered, not necessarily discovered, but he has, I guess, discovered a, a softcore pedophile ring, in his words, on YouTube. Now, he, has, he's, he thought to himself that YouTube wasn't doing enough to you know combat this pedophile ring and so he thought he'd be the hero and he decided to go to the advertisers with the proof he had 
and to force them to pull out their ads. Oof. So he essentially fucked over everybody and he is he is like fucking revolutionary like like you know just going at it like it's a war and he's the he's in the front lines of it and i mean there's obviously that's a big problem for both like i get what he's trying to do and it's a noble cause but people have already brought this up with youtube and youtube has already done things to combat this problem <sighs> so he <laughs> his reaction to advertisers pulling out was oh that's awesome but youtubers will you know they'll be un, you know they'll be affected unfortunately literally his words <laughs> literally his words unfortunately oh that's awesome like i get like okay people are are attacking this man they're destroying him. They're me, they are ripping him apart on the internet. Can I can I make a little interjection here? So I just went and read a little daily dots on a good news source, but they're showing lots of screenshots, so it's been helpful. His response to him getting fucking bashed was an hour long video. How many mid roll ads were in this video, Andy? Do you want me to do you want me to tell you? Tell me, tell me, Every, please. Everyone in the comments, this is a little game, a little user interaction. If you're on SoundCloud iTunes. If you're on SoundCloud, leave a comment. If you're on iTunes, leave a leave a five star review. Thanks. <laughs> um, but how many? Just guess. Write them in the comments. Write them in whatever. Guess how many fucking mid roll ads are in this one hour and like one hour and like ten minute long video? Can I guess? Thirty. Oh shit. Thirty fucking mid roll ads, dude. Thirty. What was your guess, Andy? I was gonna say like ten. No, 30 fucking mid roll ads in a one hour video. My now, if you God. Wanted, so, in an hour long video is 60 minutes. That's approximately a mid roll every two minutes. Give or so, am I right about that? I, I don't know take. about the exact math, but yeah, it's give or take. So, essentially, he has, he's getting, he realized he's getting all this clout. And people brought up the point that he's <laughs> doing all this because he was tried to be a YouTuber and he couldn't do it. Now, yeah. I don't think that's necessarily the, the, the thing, but. I, I think he's actually trying to do something. Uh, he's kind of going about it all wrong. He literally could look up uh, just what's happening with YouTube, you know, like what what they did to like fight it off, the fight off this problem. And he could, you know, he would have the information he needed to realize that he's kind of being a fucking idiot. And he did <laughs> just kind need, of just a little bit, just kind of. And he didn't need to do that. Now, a lot of people are obviously rightfully bashing this man. I've heard a couple of rumors, or I guess a couple of things about him that I don't know if they're true or not, but apparently he himself uh, talked about or did a video where he was hitting on a underage girl. I don't know if it was satire or if it was a joke, but people have pointed out that he did make this video, and it is a video. And it is just a bit of, just the smallest bit of irony <laughs> out there in the world. Oh boy. So that's out there in the world. That's there. And I don't know where this is going to develop. I mean, we've all, we've seen this before. We've been fucking, we've, we've been, we've been attacked. We've been destroyed. Despite our channel only being like, like, I don't know, like two years old. We've been around the YouTube game, me since 2011. And how long have you been around, Andy? Uh, me? Like 2008? Yeah. 2008? So like, well yeah, we've been following YouTube since its inception, obviously. We've, we grew up on that internet generation, so mm -hmm. we've been around, we've seen the ups and downs. We were there when there was a star rating system. We were fucking there. We I just made fucking shitty Minecraft videos in my basement a while when I was a little baby. And I've I gone through, you know, we've we've been around the block. We've watched we things happen the on the sidelines and present kind of sometimes. We saw so we know what's up. We saw the inception of Let's Plays. We were there. We were the, for I that. was there. I was there for the inception of Let's Plays. I was fucking there. I was there with Nintendo Capri Sun. And a bunch of those other YouTubers were the biggest Let's Players around. I remember right. when uh, Scene Anners was funny. Wait. No, no he wasn't. <laughs> uh, 
It's a running gag. Please don't make fun of us. Yeah. Don't, CNNers don't call us out. Don't tell us. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't mean it. It's not. It's See, just a CNNers joke. call us out, dude. Call us out. Bad exposure is still exposure. <laughs> <laughs> As Matt Watson would say. Bad exposure is good exposure. He wouldn't say yep. that. No, dude. I genuinely he feel bad do. for him because people have apparently been going to him thinking he's Matt Watson. I'm but talking about the the one that did the expose, not the, oh, okay. not the super mega one. <laughs> well, that's a side tangent then. I don't feel Poor bad guy. for the for the actual for the actual guy who created the Adpocalypse because he's kind of dumb. Have we actually had advertisers pulling out already, or is it yes, just threats? Yes. Oh. No, we have. Any big any big names? Uh, I think he contacted McDonald's. I don't know if they pulled out yet. Um, let me kill. Let me pull up the list. Um, you oh, can talk talk about talk about our struggles with YouTube while I bring up exactly. Uh, YouTube sucks. It's a terrible platform. It's true. Um, so that's where we're on Discord, and we talk to people there. We're on Twitter, and trying to. I'm trying to do Instagram and Facebook. Uh, I think one day we we said let's do a website. But honestly, a lot of uh, a lot of creators are kind of going that route. Um, Mega sixty four has been doing that for the longest time. They basically just use their YouTube channel for embedding videos onto their website. You know, uh, the company Rooster Teeth has been doing that, um, and they've been they doing a great job. But uh, Rooster Teeth got like the first program, but you can pretty much watch most content right. from their channels on their website. Okay, so uh, yeah. just a quick just a quick halt to that. AT&T, Disney, and Epic Games dropped their YouTube ads so far. Those are the ones. That's bullshit. I still see fucking Fortnite ads. <laughs> well, this is what they said. Epic Games has apparently pulled their ads from YouTube. What's the date on this? This is the 22nd of February. So it's only been it's only been like nine days since as of the time of this recording. It's been nine days. All right. Maybe maybe that has I haven't, I haven't seen Fortnite ad in a bit, but I did see Fortnite ads not that long ago. So could have okay. been the day before they pulled out. I don't know. I, am I surprised? I am not. No, not in the slightest. Epic Games was a big advertiser though. Guess what? Doesn't affect us because we can't even monetize anymore. Hold up. I'm gonna stop you right here. Uh, this is Future Keith editing the podcast on behalf of myself and Andy. Uh, this podcast stops here. We've actually split this uh, whole recording up into two bits as our podcast is usually 30 to 40 minutes and this discussion took just under, I think, 40. Um, So we wanted to keep them short. Pretty much, we decided to talk about YouTube a bit longer than we intended to and we thought it was a really interesting discussion uh, for a listener from an outside perspective or for creators as well who want to know about our experience with YouTube. So if you'd like to check that out, it is on our YouTube channel, The Neon Carnival. Uh, so if you're watching on YouTube, you can just go to our channel page, find the video. And if you're listening on a audio only platform like Spotify, iTunes, SoundCloud, please check out our YouTube channel if you haven't already. So I'd like to thank you all for listening again. And, uh, you know, usual closing spiel. Check us out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter at The Neon Carnival. And then check out our Patreon, uh, Patreon slash The Neon Carnival. And again, check out our YouTube channel. And if you're interested, check out that video on our discussion on YouTube. Thank you so much for listening, and on behalf of me and Andy, we hope to see you guys again on the next episode. Bye!